republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. Guns. Self-defense. Conceal carry. This is the Patriot Defense Podcast. From the war room in Idaho's high desert, here's your host, Todd Eccles. And we are back once again. We are tucked away in the war room somewhere in the high desert of southern Idaho. And uh, I think the wind blew us in here. Every time I do a podcast, the wind's blowing like 90 miles an hour. Yeah. Like it's, you know, it's probably the reasoning why here is because I enjoy doing the podcast, but I always got other stuff I'm doing. Oh, yeah. And so if it's nice out, I'm like, yeah, I think I'll just wait till Monday. And then it's, I think I'll just wait till Tuesday. And the next thing I know, uh magnum's getting to hold me going dude you didn't do a freaking podcast quit telling people you do one every week and then it's sunday again (laughs) that's that's usually that's usually what happens so joining me today is nick we won't give the last name we'll keep that all that private information so no thank you (laughs) you're kind of a private guy i don't know no no so uh well you're on this podcast now so you're on you're gonna be on a list yeah this is going worldwide it it, it does all five people (laughs) So uh, I do just you know you you've taken classes uh, for a couple of years and and uh, we'll get into your story here in a little bit. Well, I thought you, I'd have you on here to kind of well, so people didn't have to listen to me talk. Yeah. <laughs> you could tell your story and you've been helping me out with some stuff now and we can talk about that as well. But uh, I always like to kind of start sometimes uh, always sometimes I like to start the episodes with uh, saying what what have you done lately that's Second Amendment related? Oh, that's a good question. You just purchased something. Uh, yeah, I did actually. Yeah. Okay. Um, What'd you get? Did you want to, is that, is that info you want to keep secret? No, no, no. Everyone can know. So, um, it's actually my first, uh, rifle purchase. Yes. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it. And I ordered a Springfield Armory Hellion, uh, uh bullpup. That thing so, is cool. Yeah. Really excited to get it. Really excited to shoot it. Um, Magnum or James, whatever we want to call him. <laughs> I tried to call him Magnum. I ended up calling him James most. Of the time. Yeah, he he helped me out a ton. Uh, I think I probably got on his nerves a little bit at the end, but just uh, pegging him with questions. But uh, he's helped me out a bunch because it's a new world for me of getting into rifles. Like I've shot handguns for a long time now, but yeah. um, getting James, into that world, James like James likes to help. I doubt you annoyed him. He yeah. was probably just busy at work <laughs> yeah. at one point. So when, when's this thing coming in? Like when's it supposed to arrive? Do uh, we know? I think they said like two to seven business days. I need to contact the FFL that I'm having it shipped to and have them send over their license information, all that kind of stuff. So gotcha. Got, so you're, you're like, gonna do that on Monday. So like super excited, aren't you? Oh yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's it, no was, it was a hefty purchase, but um, it'll it'll be it'll, it'll last be you forever. Yeah, and it's something that I've wanted for a little while now. So, so another question. My question is: Are we gonna see you in the rifle class? I hope so. I yes. have to see if I have any funds left in the account. But then, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. <clears throat> uh, no, I'd like to, especially now that I got it and it's new. I want to so just th- that's learn cool. how to operate it, and that's know? cool because it's going to be a rifle class, a pistol class, and then a combo class, mm-hmm. which is going to be absolutely. That's going to be a fun class. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, and you better you better sign up because I have went out and sprayed Roundup and started killing the weeds in my other range. <laughs> oh, nice. I haven't used it for a handful of years. Oh, it's going to be at a different range? So the combo class, I believe, will be, it just be south of Filer. Oh, cool. Uh, but cool. It, yeah, it's a little bit better range for for actual rifles because it's, it's dug into the side of a hill. Mm. And so it's we're shooting actually into the earth and not into just a pile of dirt. Right. So yeah, I dug it out. And so I have the, the, you see where we dug out and cut out into the hillside and we piled the dirt up above that. Nice. So it's, 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 it's a little safer. I mean, I can do a rifle here, but you start getting people that are really moving around and working their rifles. Eh, yeah. No, you know, and sense. sometimes when the, when the farmers show up and want to irrigate, we have to pause. And sometimes you get a class like that, that's real dynamic. It kind of messes with the flow a little bit. Mm-hmm. So yeah. uh, it's out. Of, yeah, it's out of my. It's actually out of my. The range is actually out of my parents on my parents' property. So. Oh, nice. Okay. The first, you know, I had the thing dug like, like eleven years ago, something like that. The guy never sent me a bill. Really? The guy came in and ex- excavated it for me. Like we agreed on a price, everything. He never sent me a freaking bill. Hmm. And I called him. I emailed him. I texted him. 
I said, you got my address. I haven't seen a bill. No response. No response. I'm still waiting. Hopefully he doesn't listen to the podcast or I'm going to get a hefty bill. I was bill. just going to say, is he still alive? Or <laughs> I don't even know. I don't, I, I don't know. But he was an actual like con- excavation construction company. Well, and I never got billed for that thing. Oh, well, God bless him. I, yeah, for starting out, it was <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a pretty healthy uh, investment at the time. And so when it never actually, when I still got what I needed, and never had to cost me anything. I was like, whoa, yeah, kind of nice. That is nice. So um, anyhow, let's. I guess we'll just. Die. I'm bad with small talk today, except for the fact that it is getting warm in our classes. You actually helped me with my permit classes now. I do, yep. And uh, it got a little toasty at our last class. It sure did. And I'm going to tell you right now, it, that was not that was not bad yet. Oh, no. It, imagine July. Oh, you're meaning weather-wise. <laughs> yeah, I was just talking yeah, about... Yeah, yeah, okay, uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, so, <laughs> yeah. So I know what you're referring to, and, yeah. some, and we'll talk about that a little bit today. Yeah. But some of that, we're going we're gonna to have a whole group of guys together, and we're going to have a big podcast on things I've seen in class. Yeah, that'd be good. But as far as the heat wise, like um, it gets a lot warmer in July. Oh yeah, that break, being able to sit in the shade for a little bit will definitely be. Oh, we, you out. have to, and there's literally no wind down there. Yeah, it's stifling. It's. <laughs> yep, bring so, the sunblock for sure. So, what are you thinking now? I guess start with your story. Start with uh, with your journey into firearms, and then we'll get into how you're out here helping me and doing some other stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, um. I grew up in Arizona, um, which was... Oh, so the heat's nothing. Well, it's a different <laughs> heat. It's a dry heat. I, and I say that to people, and they're like, oh, you know, whatever. But it is different. Like, I don't know, 80 degrees here is like when it feels like uh, 105 there. It's just weird. I don't know. I know or maybe I just, I've just gotten wussified. I don't so know. So you think it's drier here? No, no. Drier it's drier there. in Arizona, for so you sure. You can actually feel humidity here? Yes. Oh, wow. I mean, not as much, but like... I, so I moved from Arizona to the Portland metro area. I'm saying it really quiet. Uh, we yeah. lived in Vancouver, yeah. Washington. Got tired of ste- stepping in human turds. <clears throat> yeah, so that's why we moved here <laughs> to get away from that. Um, but Arizona being a very um, two a um, favorable state, I uh, started getting into handguns and stuff with some buddies of mine. A friend of mine who was in the Marines, um, he was big into it. And then I had a couple other friends I grew up with and mostly just shooting handguns i mean i i've shot some ar platform stuff before but um handguns is what i'm most comfortable with yeah oh yeah me too oh yeah so <laughs> i feel you that uh i've i've had quite a bit of time with those um uh so that's why moving here i um the first friend and probably the only real friend that i that i have out here that i hang out with mm-hmm. i should say i have friends but like the guy that i hang out with the most is jeremy who you've had on the podcast before yeah and uh he told me about patriot defense told me about your class and stuff and he's like hey just letting you know if you want to sign up for this it's pretty cool and so i talked to my dad about it and the two of us signed up uh last year for the first was uh-huh. that your first men's class last year uh and it wasn't my first one it was my first bigger it took the men's class a handful of years to get off the ground okay <laughs> guys are a little slower to sign up than the ladies are yeah well it's growing now it um, is very yeah because we were only like seven people last year now we're a full class yeah we're twice that mm-hmm. so um signed up for your class um and what you, gun did you show up with I showed up. Let's, I had let's a, talk about it. I had a Glock 19. Ugh, ugh. It wasn't the red one, Magnum, if you're listening. <laughs> um, but yeah, I had a Glock 19. That's what I had in Arizona um, before I moved and did all this stuff. But um, I think it's a fine gun. It, you know, it's very. Uh, here's the thing: Is it pretty? No. Does it feel weird in your hand? Yep. Mm-hmm. Does it got a nasty trigger? Yep. Mm-hmm. Is it very dependable and will it go bang most of the time when you pull it? As good as any other gun? Yes, it will. Yep. Is it the most popular gun on the market? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yep. <laughs> and that's, I think, the reason I got it at first, just the popularity of it and sure. all the things that are out there for it. Um, but being, I am a left-handed shooter. Mm-hmm. And when I started taking the class more, like I... I started to understand the necessity for me to have ambidextrous yeah. stuff on Especially my Especially <laughs> when it comes to mag changes. Mag changes, slide release, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so after doing some research, I ended up getting the Walther PDP, which is what I have now. And I love that gun. Uh, it has, the, like I said, all ambi controls. 
it's ran perfectly for me. I've had zero issues with it. I remember um, when you ordered it, you're super excited. Yeah. Like probably just about like you are with this rifle. Yeah. Yeah. And then I remember when you ordered the red dot. Yep. And you, <laughs> and you ordered it off. What, what What was the site you ordered it off? Of? Ah, what was that? Optics Planet. Was Optic, that it? I think that's what it is. And you talked to me. Yeah. Or I'm like, I'm, and so they, 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 you know, that, that site, that company has a little, they, they can be a little questionable sometimes. Like, trying to sell stuff that they actually don't have in stock they'll take and they'll take your money and then just you'll wait forever for it to come in that's what happened yeah <laughs> yeah and so you're like showing me i'm like i was getting ready to find it on a different website i was i think i was making the text saying don't order it from them and i get a text back from you i just ordered it i'm like no <laughs> yeah i was a little too excited I'm like, no but it came in a few weeks later it did yeah it finally came in you're lucky <laughs> oh yeah i yeah, I was starting to get a little worried there for a little bit, but it came in. Uh, Holosone SCS, yeah. dot, um, which on the PDP, you didn't have to get any plates for it or anything. It just. Yeah, because they, they come brand specific, model mm-hmm. specific. So I've got one on my. I've got one on my VP nine now, and they're they're, they're nice low pro low uh, profile dots. I mm-hmm. mean, I really I really enjoy mine. So yeah, I like it. <laughs> So you got that, you started shooting that, and uh, you always mess me up because I come over to like watch you shoot, and you being that left-handed shooter, I'm like, that looks weird. What's mm-hmm. he doing? And like, oh, that's right, we got to go and. Now you... imagine me when I'm helping with classes. Oh yeah. Everyone is right-handed, and I'm the one that's going. Uh, um, are you doing this right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's but that's like 98 percent of the class. Yeah. So let's jump in, and you know, I might get your dad on. Do you think your dad would come on this podcast? Oh, I'm sure he would. I think he would, but. So your dad. So let's talk about your dad for a second, just because yeah. he's kind of part. Of, I think of you and your dad, and you're, you're just both in the class. Mm-hmm. So what's your? What was your dad's? Ex- well, I don't. Wanna, I don't want you to tell his story. So your dad's in the class, and uh, is he enjoying it so far? Yeah, think? yeah. It's been cool for us to like have something to do together. Uh, oh yeah. Every other week. Yeah. Um, we come out here and we do this, and then it's become. Uh, tradition for us to go to Applebee's afterwards. So. Oh, really? That's cool. <laughs> yeah, every time we go out and get something to drink and have a beer or two and um, hang out there. So that's awesome. Yeah. So it's been really cool for us to be able to connect in that way. And uh, yeah, he's loving it. I mean, he and the big reason too that we wanted to do it was he wants to become more comfortable and familiar with his pistol as well. Yeah, yeah. So. And he got pretty comfortable with his last one until it ended up in six pieces. Yeah, yeah. He was, the, and it, I'm sure the listeners, if they recall, I talked about someone's gun blowing up on him. That was that was him. That was Rod. Mm-hmm. And uh, now, and the uh, old Cajun Cowboy's gonna love this. Rod went out and picked himself up a, a Canic rival. Oh yeah, sweet gun. And absolutely is a Canic, uh, a Canic fanboy at this point now. The- who is the uh rod oh yeah yeah your dad yeah. your dad talking. he's a canic fanboy like he, big time he loves that gun which mm-hmm. is awesome because it's a good gun really good gun yeah and he's really enjoying shooting and we'll get him on here to tell the rest of his story because I, I got some questions for him i'm gonna grill him on some things he doesn't realize it yet yeah he did assure me that that would be the number one podcast i ever had once he was on it i'm though, sure so. he did yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure he did so uh, you've started helping me out for i don't know we'll say the last I don't know, it had to be like the last five five months or so, five, six months, let's say, mm-hmm. um, with in my permit classes. And I know we had Jeremy on and he kind of talked about that. Um, you know, what I do is is we're in class and I, I see you, you know, I see you guys in class and I start looking and, you know, I it's like, you know, occasionally I'll need some help, right? And so I decide kind of like who's like who's good at this, like who's focused, who knows what they're doing, who's safe, that type of thing. And then that's kind of who I bring on to to help in the classes yeah and i knew and you know nothing against you and jeremy I and mean, you guys do a great job but i knew i was well established with as far as james would help me out um and so we brought you guys on and kind of set you up in between us right so mm-hmm. we can kind of i don't know if you guys knew the plan but so we kind of oversee a little bit and you guys are doing great well i mean what are your thoughts so far uh as far as that many people with firearms and all different skill levels, mind you. Like, yeah, what are you learning? What are you seeing? Are you? Are you? Yeah, you just. I'll let you go. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's been interesting for sure, and I'm appreciative of you having me out to help with that. Um, it's definitely helped me to learn a little bit more as well, because I'm not the most 
like I'm not like James and who knows everything ins and outs of guns. You know right? the basics. But I know the basics and you I know keep people safe. That's the, and that's the thing is that's what I'm there to do is make sure everyone's safe, nothing goes wrong, nothing goes bad in that in that manner. Um it's surprising to me how many people come to a concealed <laughs> carry permit class and have never shot a handgun in their life before. Like and it's kind of scary at times, but um, it, that's just surprising to me. So and so, no, I get it. And so, mm-hmm. let me. I, I I've said. I think I've said this before. Let me preface this with: I've been doing this eleven years. I've never had anything bad happen in class, as far as anyone getting hurt. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't even talk about it because now I probably just jinx myself. But I mean, all the preparations are there. The first aid kits, the precautions, everything is there in case something bad happens. I've never had anything bad happen, mm-hmm. and I think it's because. I make sure that we have enough eyes, enough help out there. So literally when we have um, the people out there shooting, the students out there shooting, I mean, you're you're looking at the three people directly in front of you and you're, you're an arm's length away from any of them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think that's kind of what has, and, and other safety protocols has allowed me to be safe. But you're right though, that we do get a handful of people that come in and have never shot a gun before. And it's it can be it can be tough but it's part of it's part of the gig Mm -hmm. and and honestly this is i i try to encourage people to take a beginner's class first just because they're going to be safer but it's also going to make them feel more comfortable right but they don't do that and so i tell everyone that this class a permit class is an educational and i'll tell this right to the class like in the during the class this is an educational class we're going to make sure you understand safety understand the fundamentals your training classes come after this. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, you know, I, I let them know that. I try to get a feel for who's who's new, <laughs> maybe never touched a firearm yet, but it's, uh, it's a little mind-blowing though, right? Yeah. And the fact that they will take these people, and I'm going to go down a different trail here for a second, but, you know, we had a, excuse me, we had a law this year that didn't pass um, where they wanted to put... Um, I won't say anyone, but we'll say teachers or pe- certain people that all they had was a permit. They All they had to have was their Idaho enhanced permit. Once they had that, they could carry in school amongst the kids. Mm-hmm. Okay. So after seeing what you've been seeing, what are your thoughts on that? Um, <laughs> it's it's you, a loaded question because I do think. I, un, I, I think the same way. Yeah. I, I think it would say. be a good thing, but more training is needed than just the enhanced class that's exactly the way that more training is required let's see who is dedicated who's going to put in the time i'm not saying they have to pay for it themselves Mm -hmm. but who's going to put in the time the extra time to go and take the training and i think it's going to weed out a lot of them but anyhow back to the class yeah Uh, i make points where i can (laughs) no that's a good that was a fun one i mean they you know there's a lot of people that have never yeah they're new they're new 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 oh yeah and sometimes they're okay because they don't have any bad habits. Yeah, sometimes. Um, it's 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 interesting to watch because at the beginning of each class, we you have them come up and hold out the weapon and we check for proper grip. And we're trying to get a feel for who's out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and there's a lot of people, especially people that are a little bit older, that mm-hmm. have been doing things a certain way for so long that it's muscle memory or whatever. Teacup. Yep. And... You know, I will, I'll, when I'm helping with the class, I'll, I'll remind them two or three times. But if I see them just constantly doing it, I let them do their thing as long as the barrel's pointed down range and they're being safe. So. You have to choose your battles as long as they're, and that's true. So you've, you've taught them, you've told them, and you've corrected them numerous times. Mm-hmm. If the barrel's pointed down range, and I look at the fact is, are they hitting the, the, the paper target? Okay. Yeah. Uh, if they're not, we need to figure something out. But are they hitting the paper target? And if they are, you know what? You just let it go. Because there's going to be someone there who's willing to take your advice. You keep an eye on them. You mm-hmm. want to make sure they're being safe to themselves and others. But there's other people that are going to take, uh, you know, instruction better, right? Um, and some people just come into those classes too, and they're just know-it-alls. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you've yeah, experienced any of those yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll tell you why they don't need you. Mm-hmm. And then you'll see him shoot and you go, oh, no, you need me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you need some instruction. And I think that's the thing, honestly, if I could 
maybe go down a different oh, path. Wow. Just um, go for it. The thing that when, cause when we first started coming to your uh, men's class, my dad and I, we weren't sure what it was going to be like. I, I have met a couple other people in the industry, so to say around the, in the magic Valley here that mm-hmm. are either on like a gun store or something like that. And the thing that I appreciate about you specifically is the fact that you aren't this um, big, yeah, puff your <laughs> chest out, like haughty, like, look at me, I'm going to show off. And like, you don't have a rough exterior to yourself like some other guys in the gun industry do. I, pre- um, I appreciate that. Sometimes I feel like I need that exterior, but. No, I think that's what draws. And to be frank, like you talk about how your women's classes are full or way full. I think that's a big part of it is just your personality and, and the fact that you are, you, you're, you teach people, but you're not like a, a jerk about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, so to say, so like, I'm not condescending. Yeah. Or like, again, like this, like arrogant. gristled guy, you know, yeah, yeah arrogant. Drop um, and give me 20. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm ex military, but, and like, okay, that works for some people. Right. Yeah. But like, I, that's what I appreciate about you and everything you're doing here. Because it just makes us feel, I think, a little more comfortable, um, more re- more relatable. I like to think that we have, I make it, uh, here, it sounds like I brought you in just to say this stuff about me, which I did not. And I, no. I do, I do, I do appreciate it. I prepped, it. Before <laughs> <laughs> prepped before this. You prepped before this. He sent me a script three days ago. Like, we went <laughs> over it. I highlighted a few things. Yeah. No, uh, You know, I like to think we have a good time, too. Right, yeah, we and do. we have an enjoyable time. I, I like to make people comfortable because I want to feel comfortable too. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And you know, and I, I I really enjoy it when everyone comes over here and shoots on the all those nights, the women's and the men's groups. It's it's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. And I kind of look at it, I want to treat people the way I I want to be treated. And and I'll I'll tell you this, you know, growing up, you know, I was I was pretty timid, right? I mean, you know, I never hung out with the cool kids. I never. I was kind of, you know. I, how do I say this? That sound like I'm a real dud, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm just, you know, I just, I was just growing up. I was one of those kids that was just kind of, you know, soft and, you know, in my feelings a little bit. And just, I, you know, I didn't, I wanted to just kind of hide. I hate it when people called me out, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And so I I, I, I would treat people the way that I would want to be treated. Yeah. If, the golden rule. Yeah. I mean, if that, if you can see that, right. I don't, I don't call people out. I don't make them feel bad. I don't, Unless someone's being super ignorant, and then I'll just tell them to pack their bags because I don't need any holes in me. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, yeah, that's the biggest thing, and yeah, so I think that's that. And then, like, again, if I, you know, uh, your motto that's on your hats that says "Evil exists, therefore I carry." Yeah, that's another thing that I really liked about just your overall brand, if that's what you want to call it. But oh, it's a do. brand. I try to get it to be a brand. <laughs> yeah, because like ultimately like that's what i believe like there's evil out there in the world and if i'm gonna be um you can do one of two things you can bury your head in the sand and act like nothing bad is going to happen to you Mm -hmm. or you can become prepared and and do the proper training and hope it never happens and hope it never happens right um because a lot of people that i've talked to a lot of people and to touch on like the teacher thing that you talked about I think that if we lived in a world where there was more people that were prepared and knew how to handle a firearm and carried one, that there would be less gun violence. An armed society is a polite society. Yeah. No, it's a hundred percent. I I agree a hundred percent with you. And that's kind of why I would, you know, that motto is what I made it. Evil exists, therefore I carry. I want to be prepared. And, and just when this really hit me, when I first kind of got started in all this, I was, I was, hadn't been married more than a couple of years. I've been married since I got married at 18 and hmm. I had my first kid within, you know, within, you know, probably 10 months. Oh, wow. Right. Um, so, I mean, I had, I had a kid rather relatively young. It's like, I, you know, I got married, um, out of choice. It wasn't cause I had to, and then I had a kid and then, you know, life just kind of hits you. Sure. Right. And, and here I am, it's my duty to, to, to raise and protect my wife and my, my child, you know, I eventually ended up having five kids. Hmm. Um, so it was kind of like I needed to do what I needed to do. And the world um, way back then, I, I think about the way the world was way back then, 20, oh my gosh, long time ago, 20, how long have we been married? 
I think it's 29 years. Well, you're 68 now? Or? I'm like I'm 90, sorry. Sad, 97. <laughs> so it was like 28, 20, 28 years, so say. Yeah. And um, we thought the, I thought the world was bad then. <laughs> and, and, and you know, and I felt the need, I felt the need to what, be able to protect my family if I needed to. And now I look at the world now and I'm like, whoa. It's right? bad, bro. It's out there and stuff happens. And I don't, I've told the story a dozen times. I'm not going to tell it again today, but I mean, there's been at least twice, one just last year where I actually had to draw my firearm in yeah. a place I never thought I'd have to draw my firearm. When you were going running, right? When I was going running and yeah. I had a, I had a conversation with someone on the phone today. We were texting and, and, and she was telling me about some stuff going on with her neighbors and anyhow, just arguments and fights and stuff. And I said, well, it's time to move. She goes, no, I was here first. And that's the way I look at it. I have people tell me, well, where you were, you know, where I had that incident with my firearm, where I run. They're like, well, maybe you need to find a different time to run. Like, so it's not early in the morning or find a different place to run. And I'm like, because you know, like, the world's changing, the city's changing. And there's, and I'm like, you know what? No, I was there first. Right. Like, I was there first. And we can't just start allowing that stuff to, to run happen. away. Yeah. I mean, I lived in a, in an area in the country that allows that kind of stuff to just go on. Yeah. And you don't want to live in, in a place like that. I can tell you that that's why we moved. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, don't let them change what you want to do. Right. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's crazy. The world that we live in now. And I, I, you know, I follow some of the, this is kind of an off topic thing, yeah, go maybe a little bit, but if you listen to this podcast for any amount of time, there's no, <laughs> we do try, but there's no rhyme or reason. I follow <laughs> these pages that are like, they're called like nostalgia or whatever. And it's like, they play videos of like, this is remember Christmas in the nineties or whatever. And it oh, shows yeah. like a, a yeah. mall or whatever. Yeah. And I sit there and I go, man, those were like, I'm a nineties kid. I grew, I was born in 88. So growing up man the world it just seems like such a different place now and not to mention when my dad was a kid or yeah you know, you're older than i yeah so you, like, you were just you were no no no, no, I was, no. you were getting ready <laughs> to classify me in there with your dad no 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 you? you were i chose very specific language no. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what i mean like the world has just in your last podcast like uh you were playing those clips from rfk talking about how they used to take their rifles to school and had gun club at school. I've never lived in that podcast down, but go on. I'm I agree though. You, well, we don't have to bring it up if you don't want me to, but <laughs> no, it's just, just keep, but no, just keep talking. I, just to make a point about like, we used to live in a society where you didn't have to worry as much about crazy people, I guess. And that kind of stuff happening. Um, yeah, I know for sure, hundred percent for sure. I mean, you used to be able to leave your doors unlocked, right? Mm -hmm. You used to see rifles in the back of truck windows, right? Yeah, uh, you don't see that anymore, and I don't encourage anyone to do that anymore. But you don't see that anymore, mm -hmm. and it's it's just a changing world, and you got to be prepared, right? You know, you gotta you gotta protect your family, protect your home, protect yourself, and know that evil is out there, and just when you least expect it. Mm -hmm. It could rear its ugly head, and then you're going to have to figure out, okay, am I ready for this? Can I defend myself, or am I just going to roll over and let it happen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'll be honest, like I taking the classes and stuff, I still have quite a ways to go to where I am more prepared. Mm -hmm. um, like for me, I'm a bigger guy. I'm trying to figure out comfortable ways that I can carry. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's a journey for sure. Yeah, and I know it's not supposed to be like it's never going to be like one hundred percent comfortable, but like uh, I need to be able to like do my daily life and carry. Yeah, you know no, what I mean? No, you do, you do. Um, so uh, in that sense, like I'm still working on some of that stuff, preparedness, and and just having like a home defense system set up and that well, kind of stuff. And know? it's 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 interesting too because once you start to shoot and you start to get into to like learning how to defend yourself and. And, and wanting to do that and carry a gun and defend your home. And we were talking, we don't have to get into this. I'm just thinking about conversation we've had in the past. Cause I know where I've been in the past as well. You start to find all this stuff works together, right? Mm -hmm. Physical fitness, shooting, all this stuff just works together. It just blends together. And it's, 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 it's a whole system, right? Mm -hmm. And we're all, we're all working hard at it. I, 
struggle all the time with stuff and and we're working toward that and eventually you mentioned you know that we do stuff in the class and we do lots of stuff and and you're doing quite well you guys are all learning i think um now that we actually have a bigger class you know if i continue this which i think i will um into next year i'll probably actually divide the men's class that's awesome i didn't i, was thinking about I, I didn't have enough before right i was too afraid um and it, it, it struggles you just got to reach that point because where the year before i had seven people right that's I, that's okay i'm happy with seven yeah but if i had split the class and had three sign up and two sign up that's that's oh, yeah. that's stretching me a lot <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that because i was actually that's what my dad and i were discussing last class i was like man if this keeps growing all split it it's gonna have to yeah and that's the same way i did with the women's they had they had three two years where honestly it just keeps changing every year so the first two years uh, they were just a play it just was a place for me to teach them the fundamentals and give them two nights a month just to come and shoot right like i didn't give them drills i didn't do this i just we worked on the fundamentals and then it changed and it grew and then i had to divide and make more and once i divided in the next year i had to have two beginners classes one advanced class and so that's where the men's group is headed as well i just can't all of a sudden divide it and maybe not get something to happen you right. see what i'm saying right. as a business owner i mean <clears throat> i'm sure you, you know you can you can see it through my eyes a little bit oh yeah for sure <laughs> yeah you're so. growing and it's good that you're growing like it's cool to see that too um but yeah you'll figure out the changes as, as oh they, yeah as they come i know? will it's always something yeah oh yeah <laughs> so tell your dad he'll be in he'll be in an actual advanced class it's, oh yeah i'll let <laughs> him be still around next year because i know like the fun thing for us last year was running through the courses you know do you have you noticed and have you noticed this year that we're kind of on an accelerated path a little bit oh yeah yeah it's different. and that was the goal is to accelerate that so I'm going to send out a message. It's kind of class info, but I'm going to send out a message to everyone, making sure that everyone has holsters, reminding them again to get holsters. Cause the next time we meet, I'd like to do the draw again. I'd like to, I need to get one. Cause I don't have, one. <laughs> I just have an inside the waist for my Walther. I need right. to get outside. But see, I'd like to start with that earlier and we're starting like months earlier on that. Yeah. And so that's what I would, that's what I would like to do um, next. So we can do the courses and we can go right from the draw if if you know if people want to i'll feel more right. more comfortable right. doing that because as an instructor that can be kind of a sketchy thing oh i bet yeah <laughs> it, I can, bet. it can be it can be a little bit of a nerve-wracking ordeal mm -hmm. for sure <laughs> until i know people are going to you know know how to do it and can do so safely yeah finger off the trigger until you know, all kinds of stuff like just... look it into the holster like don't put your hand in front of the gun um yeah oh yeah i'm sure <laughs> so i'm glad you guys are enjoying it i mean is there any any other thoughts on on the class or what you're learning or anything like that if there's none say todd i'm done man uh, we're no. good i mean on the class it's just um again you learn something like a lot of it is what what we do is very fundamental based of just good trigger control good trigger press you know proper grip do you see how that's the base of everything though? Mm -hmm. and, and getting that down and then working it. Cause like my biggest, my goal for this year coming into class was, okay, I know the fundamentals. I know what I'm supposed to do. How can I work speed into that now? Yeah. yeah. Like, ultimately, right. We're all here to prepare for like, if, if something were to if happen, if something were to happen and there's a real world situation, God forbid, how am I going to react? How, what's my reaction time going to be? Mm -hmm. What's, what's it going to feel like coming out of holster faster and like just getting rounds on target then right? you'll like some of the drills that we're, we have coming up because we're doing the patches and so um we have one coming up called the tallahassee where it's going to be a mag change drill mm. but it's it's accuracy and timed nice and so that's where you're going to start getting the speed i'm i'm busting out the timer this year right the mm -hmm. real timer we're gonna well it was the real timer last year but i'm we're really going to focus on some drills with timing it so mm -hmm. that way you can the men's class is funny because you guys always compete with each other <laughs> the women kind of don't do that it's like oh she did it yeah, <laughs> yeah i'm <laughs> yeah. not picking on the women but i mean that that's, makes sense it's just a different it's just a different group of people right and you guys are like I can beat him. <laughs> I can beat him. Everyone's just trying to chase 
James in the class because like, <laughs> James sets the bar and can you get close? <laughs> hey, yeah. So yeah. I'll run some drills and then I'll have James run some drills and I'll kind of find a, I'll get a threshold for like, as far as the, the patch is concerned, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll figure out a time that I think is going to be tough to reach, but can be reached achieved. You see what I'm sure. saying? Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll run it and then I'll let James run it and I'll take a, happy medium somewhere depending yeah. on, on how that on and how I, that works i'm gonna try for my trigonometry patch the next way whenever you class. whenever you want to so and that's one of the things i don't want people to think i'm passing that up i can't spend every class just and that's all we do as a group mm-hmm. right um so i i let you guys try it once and then now it's like if you want to do it great let me know we'll make it time to do it what did you why did you think that target messed everyone up because essentially what that is for the podcast listeners is it's a it's got what we got 28 circles on it mm-hmm. and the circles are bigger than the bullseyes on the on the basic standard bullseye targets yeah and everyone can shoot the bullseye i've seen it but yet they struggle with these dots or with these circles why why do you think they're struggling with it what it it just and hmm. i watch people i watch people when they're shooting at these targets and i look at their bullseye target I'm like, I know you're a good shot. And then they, I see him shoot, and then it just melts their minds. It just melts their brains. Well, what is it? Do you, you've seen it too. Well, <laughs> like the first time I did it, I don't know if I would have passed, to be honest. And I think like, like I'm aiming for bullseye every time on like the bigger targets, but like my tendency is to go little down and right. Like, I don't know. So like... like uh, that down and... Uh, because I'm left-handed. Because you're left-handed, yeah. so I'd be trigger press. I know. I know <laughs> okay. what it is. I'm just, <laughs> no, I'm, just I'm just pointing it out on a, on a public podcast, I on know. a public domain. No. Um, so I think like I don't know if it's I don't know if it's intimidating. It's because it's not to me. It's just like I'm really trying to focus on that. I could run a timer. No, please don't. <laughs> please don't. And that's what I think I'll do is when I do it, I'm going to take time and really focus on every single one and um, if you want i i'm gonna tell you know you gotta actually achieve it here but i'm gonna throw the offer out there that i can send people the file or just give them a give them one of those targets and they can photocopy it and practice it as much as they want mm-hmm. yeah especially if i had like one of those mantis yeah or things. something yeah that'd be cool but you like the challenges you like the patches oh yeah I'll put we, them on we my just, we're just That'd starting fun. yeah well, they're, they're cool everyone wants one of those yeah people on facebook are like oh, patches i want one of those patches i could come and do the challenge and i'm like i'm sure you could should have paid at the beginning of the year for the for mm-hmm. the men's group everyone's a sucker for patches and stickers man <laughs> that's the thing that yeah i patch. got a sticker from you last time i was gonna put on my water bottle but actually don't know where i put it so oh well if you need to know just let me know we'll figure but, it out we'll figure it out but yeah so well cool i'm glad you guys are enjoying it um is there one thing as far as helping you with the classes that uh i'm trying to think what's the hardest thing about helping with those with the permit classes um like what's the one thing you've come across the or the 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 stuff that maybe you didn't understand at first you're like what i gotta oh okay now you're just like going with the flow do you know what i'm talking about yeah Something odd that just stands out, something you didn't expect, or... I think it's just trying to get people to break, f- like, in from, like... So you have the people that do the fishing and the bowling. Oh, gosh. So, you know, putting yeah. your gun in the air or pointing it towards the ground as you come up to target. Um, I think that's, especially, again, with some of the older people that I've seen in the class, like, they do a lot of the fishing. It's kind of like that, that like, movie kind of thing. Like, put them up. You know, and they yeah, oh yeah, really put that yeah. uh, that gun out there slow. Uh, watching for that, and then like you're trying to watch three people at one time. That's yeah. the hardest part because like, yeah, it's nice. Like last class, I had um, Jim who actually goes to our men's class. Oh yeah, yeah, and he you, was in you, my group, and you, I was he like, was okay. Yeah, I was like, oh, I don't really have to worry about him. And yeah. I had a couple other ladies that I had to spend more time with, so that was nice. It wasn't, <laughs> you know, it wasn't <laughs> like James on the end having to deal with some other people, but um. Yeah, I think it's just hard to watch, and we'll help each other out. Like, oh sure, if Jeremy sees one of my people doing something, he'll come and tell me, or vice versa. We'll overlap, yeah, you know, which helps. So, uh, yeah, just that trying to get people to break 
those muscle memory bad habits and welcome to my world yeah and and, you know again like i tell people my biggest goal when helping with those is that you just go back home with 10 fingers 10 toes or i should say whatever appendages you came with (laughs) some people i tell uh, everyone that if you uh, they're like what do i need to do to pass the class i said tell you what you show up you listen to the classroom portion you ask your questions you learn there's no test we go out on the range you have to fire 98 rounds um we want you to be safe we want you to to follow the rules and demonstrate good safe skills and good shooting fundamentals and as long as there, no one goes home with any extra holes in them and the end of the day yeah. then, then you pass yep. that's, yeah, that's exactly. essentially what i tell people because it's true i mean that's about the only standard the state gives you yeah <laughs> Right. Like you said, you could sit there and fire 98 rounds into the dirt if you wanted to. He could. There is a time criteria. But, yeah, essentially, as far as the drill is concerned, I mean, there's nothing. And I'll say, too, like, I don't know how other enhanced concealed classes are ran in Idaho, but I feel like you kind of probably go above and beyond trying to show some of the shooting fundamentals. Like, I appreciate that. I don't know if any other classes are actually showing proper grip or... I would hope they are, but again, I don't know. Well, and here's what's going to happen here in the future. Once I, I've, I've talked about it uh, a lot. Well, thought about, talked about it with people I know, people I respect, and 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 done some thinking about it. And we're good. I'm going to get ready to change up the permit class here. Hmm. I just got to sit down and make it work. I got it. Well, I got to sit down and put pencil to paper and see if it'll work. And we're going to try to. My goal is to try to help people achieve more in the permit class hmm. and actually gain gain more be more successful is that and i don't want to get into it right now because i don't have all the ins and outs figured out it's, it's like a whole revamping of the entire class oh cool still within the state criteria but i'm just i want to turn out a better uh, a better concealed carrier so what i was what i want to do that's a good goal and so that that's my goal but i gotta it's, oof, I got it. I'm mowing lawns right now. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, the, it's, that time of year. it's that time of year. Like I, but I need to sit down and figure this out. So that's in the works, whether you'll see it this summer or maybe this winter, I don't know when that'll happen, mm-hmm. but it's going to just, it's like, I'm starting, it'll be like, I'm starting fresh again at the very beginning. And that's, that's hard because I thought I have right now I have a system and that system works. The system works. But again, like <laughs> it's good that you're, if, you, if you're not trying to grow, you're just staying stagnant, right? So yeah. Like, that's a good good thing that you're looking at that and wanting to change things. And yep. I'm sure you can get input from James or Jeremy or whoever. Yeah. Oh, but. yeah. So uh, one more thing, and then I think we'll wrap this up. And this is something I'm actually going to post on my personal Facebook page. So I do know that there's a lot of people that they and i've done it before too right but they they leave here they get to know me because they spend eight hours with me or they take a private instruction class from me or they hear me on the radio or maybe they listen to me on the podcast and that's fantastic and i appreciate all the support uh if you want to do something to really help me out you know go go like my my patriot defense facebook page Mm -hmm. or, or my instagram right and if you find me, because you know my name, I, I don't hide. If you find my my personal page on Facebook, you know, you can like that as well. But what I want to let people know that that is, I won't say it's real private because they don't have it locked down and maybe I should, but I always worry because as a business owner, I'm always worried that I'm going to offend someone. Mm. I offend someone with the things I say, the different things I think, my beliefs on on different things, my political beliefs, my religious beliefs. Anything that I might have, because my opinions are, you know, our opinions all differ. And and a lot of times the things I think and the things I believe in don't always line up with the way people think they should. Mm-hmm. Like they see me, I have guns, I teach it, I'm a Second Amendment supporter, and they just assume things about me. Mm-hmm. And that ir- <laughs> that kind of irritates me a little bit. But I, it's okay, because what it is, is 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 I'm afraid to actually come out and say what I believe in, because I'm afraid it's going to shut off portions of people that might come and, you know, uh, utilize my business, right? Sure. So what I'm saying is if you want to be on my personal Facebook page, that is fine with me, but just know that I'm going to post stuff up there that you, I may post stuff up there that you may or may not agree with. 
Yeah. And just know that's my private that's my private Facebook page. If you want the air personal Facebook page, if you want the business stuff, just you can you can remove yourself and then you can go to the Patriots Fins Facebook page. I don't care if you're on my personal page, but you're going to get things that you may not like. Yeah. But you know, 100 about 99% of the things you're going to see is my grandkids, pictures of my dogs, and the old pieces of crap that I drag home that I spend money on, the rusty things with wheels, okay? Mm-hmm. That's what, and my running stuff. That's what you're going to mostly see, but occasionally I may put up something political that you don't agree with. I may put up something religious um, or non-religious that you don't agree with. Um, and just know that that is there, and you've been kind of warned. Yeah. And <laughs> I think, you know, we live in a world right now where, like, we, you and I were talking before we started this of, like, I feel like there's a lot of companies out there that are making, they feel the need to make a statement about every little happening in the world, every political thing or yep. whatever. And it's like, so I can get where like, you want to separate the business from your personal life. Um, but for me, like I'll straight up tell people, like I, I have very strong beliefs about certain things. Oh, and I, you too. And I, a lot of people do. Everyone does. I feel, well, mm-hmm. not everyone. Some people can be Wish you swayed watching. with the wind. Right. But <laughs> Um, I have my personal beliefs, but I understand that like, if I were to run a business like you, I would probably do the same thing, you know, where like I have a personal page, my private page that my friends and family can view. And then I have my business page. People are going to put the two and two together at some point. But again, it's your, your public, what you put out there as a business, I guess, can stay strictly business. You don't have to yeah. make it. And, you know, being a 2A Patriot Defense in, in and of itself is a strong 2A proponent, right? That, yeah. Oh, the yeah, business would sure. not exist without that. 100%. So you can make political posts if you want to call them about that, but that's just our, I believe, our God-given rights. Um, well, what it is, is is I go throughout my life and I get people uh, that, that say things or they're talking to me. I really want to not be, I'm not mad at them, but I really want to let them know how I feel. I want to have a friendly debate, right? But I can't say certain things for fear it does what? I own a small business, man. Mm-hmm. For fear it just shuts my business down. Yeah, it's tough. And so it's really, it's really I do, hard. I do think part, not part of, one of the biggest problems in our world today is that people cannot have a different a, opinion a, from you. Well, and a, and, a, and a, a, what's the word I'm looking for? A friendly or a... Friendly debate. Debate, yeah. Like, the fact that we've work. gotten to the point in our world where people cannot just agree to disagree, you have your own beliefs, I have my own beliefs, but we can still live in a society together. Yeah. You know? Um, man, people have just become so dogmatic in a lot of the things that they believe of, like... Uh, if you believe this, you're a, a Nazi or you're a, you know what I mean? Like people yeah. will go that oh, yeah. far with some things that they claim for people to be. And it's like, man, we're just, we have different views and that's okay. You, you know, know, I state what I state certain beliefs and, you know, stuff that I believe in and things that I think about on my radio show that I do on Fridays. Right. It's mm-hmm. no, it's no, it's no, uh, you know, it's no secret where I stand politically. It, it's really not. Mm-hmm. Um, but people just assume and then they fail to see. I don't, God, I just, this is bad. This is, I feel like, I feel like just talking about it on my pod, on my podcast, right. Is, mm-hmm. is not good, but I've had people, um, in the past that have called the radio show while I'm on there and just tried to just rip me up one side and down the other try to call me out on the air and you're this and you're that and you're not a patriot and you're not this and you're not for the i mean live on the radio show Mm. i've had people send me text messages that were three four five paragraphs long stating how they don't like me and i'm this and i'm bad for the show and i'm bad for the this and i don't know what i'm talking about and yeah i mean i've received them all right and so i'm really kind of guarded not that i'm not I'm not that I'm a pansy, but I'm just guarded because it's like, I, I, the way my beliefs are is what? I don't care who you are. I don't care what you do, right? As long as, 
you're not doing anything illegal, right? Mm -hmm. um, you can do whatever and believe whatever you want that makes you happy, and I am 100% okay with that. You can come here, you can take a permit class, I will teach you how to use your firearm, I'll teach you how to be safe, I'll teach you how to exercise your Second Amendment rights. I don't care otherwise. But people don't always reciprocate that to me. Yes, and he, <laughs> I have a belief about that. And again, not to bring up the last podcast. Oh, you're but, fine. Because in the clip you played, like, uh, when RFK was talking, he was talking about, like, when Columbine happened and, like, there's just been a steady decline in mental health in America, mm -hmm. particularly. I mean, probably in the world, but speaking in America. But in my opinion, the biggest proponent in, in uh, growth to that, I guess, the thing that's making that grow at an exponential rate is um, just our our ease of communication online now. So like information flows a lot faster than it did back in the 80s, 90s. Oh, for sure. And with social media, like I should say technology is the driving force behind this is what I wanted to say. Um, with social media, you have people coming on there saying things to people that they would not say normally, normally face to face mm -hmm. with someone. Yeah. And so I think that that's, that's having a psychological impact on people to be able to like, Oh, I can, I can actually say these things to people. And then like it does fester and grow into what we're seeing happen with in real life, people Lose, doing horrible losing things. their minds. Yeah. yeah. So that's just one of my um, beliefs with, you know, technology, like there's a good and bad to everything. Like the whole idea of social media when it was first proposed is like, it's going to make people connect. Like you'll be able to connect with your old high school buddies or whatever. Um, there's some of that, but I think the majority of it, especially like on Twitter or Facebook, yeah. it's just become a cesspool of people just talking crap about each other and I learned a long time because I used to get in those feuds online, right? I'd get on Twitter, I'd get on Facebook. I did, I did too, years and years ago, and I just refused to do it anymore. Yeah, like I would get on there, man, and I'd just go back and forth on these comments. And, what and, and a then waste now I'm just, of time. Yeah, I'm never going to change someone's mind on a screen. Well, and people, and what happens is you just keep going back and forth, and I, I don't know, this happens to you, I'm just assuming it, it was everyone just starts getting every comment you just get nastier and nastier and meaner and meaner and mm -hmm. nasty and i'm just like whoa yeah <laughs> like i don't want to be that i don't want to be that person yeah right right <laughs> and so now yeah like you're saying i i don't even i'll look at it i might make a couple posts here and there but i do not engage anymore <laughs> to so, like to the point i used so to. this is funny and it's well this is uh, so venturing away from patriot defense and that's okay but i look at these like rant i like to read lots of stuff on facebook right mm -hmm. i like the, the like we have local rant and rave pages magic valley rant and rave twin falls rant and rave pages they're like the best if you want to read something entertaining just read those and, oh, and read the comments but what gets me what gets me is is I don't comment on any of that stuff unless someone is asking a question and I actually have a legit you know they're they're trying to get help and I have a legit answer for it right. Mm -hmm. um, some of the 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 people that get on there and they make the snarky comments and they make the they're trying to make the person posting seem seem dumb or stupid because some of the stuff that gets posted up there is kind of like. You know, you do kind of look at it and go, well, I don't, that's why'd you post that, right? Right. But um, are the big name small business owners in this area? Mm. I see them on there and I'm like, how can you respond to that? Aren't you worried that that's going to affect your business? Like they know who you are, right? I don't know. I just, it, it boggles my mind yeah. because I look at that and I'm like, nope, uh, I don't want to touch that with the 10 foot pole. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm staying away from that and that these people are just responding and I'm like, I don't know. Anyhow, that was kind of no, off yeah, topic, but it's, it's insane though to, to watch it ha play out. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Again, it's just like none of this would happen face to face mo the majority of the time. Yeah. You know, like I'm not going to say some of the things that I've heard people say to another person if I'm standing right in front of them, it's just called decent, like human decency. Being a, yeah. But that's a problem is there's not a lot of human decency anymore. That's right. There mm -hmm. is just, there is not. And that's again, and, and, and I that, think the whole driving force behind that, in my opinion, is this whole P 
people have just become comfortable with it. They get mm-hmm. away with it. There's no repercussions. Yep. You know, back in the day, you say something to someone. You're meeting them by the dumpster. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I don't know. But yeah. And sorry, you had me. I told you that we could probably go down some. Oh, we could. In fact, if, we just say, <laughs> this, this is not going to be the last time that you're on the show. Okay. So just, just so you know. Yeah. So, um, we'll in, save some. In fact, I've, always, I've actually thought about. I've actually started about thought about starting another podcast at one point or another, but I have a struggle doing this one. Yeah. <laughs> but I have all these good ideas in my head, and I don't know. I may have to let them stew, and I might have to hit you up and yeah, and, we'll spitball and and see what we can come up with. But anyhow, I think we'll just go ahead and finish it up. We've been doing this almost an hour. Not that we have a time limit. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you heard me a minute ago, I was starting to cough. So allergies, man. It's a yeah, real, it's a wind. real, yeah. there's so much dirt in the air right now. It's, it's, it's rough. It's, it's a real thing. So I do want to say, hey, if you listen to the podcast, I do appreciate it. You can share it on all your social medias, um, share it with your family, share it with your friends. It's free. Uh, hit the subscri- uh, subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, just go ahead and do that. It really helps the podcast. I do appreciate everyone's support. Uh, go out. If you live in the Magic Valley area, we are going to be in the 60s this week. And then summer's going to come back at full steam ahead probably by mo- next Monday. Mm-hmm. Uh, so here we go. Enjoy it. Get out. Sling some lead. Um, and spend the time with your family. And I think we got Memorial Day weekend coming up real soon. This That's is, right. This next, next weekend. Yeah. Next weekend. So the weather's going to be crap. So <laughs> d- just know how that works. But anyhow, spend that time with your family. I'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>